What's up everybody? A lot of you have asked questions about my faith or you just wanna know more about it. And I've talked a lot about my religion in many different places from the real to here. So today I've decided to take a deep dive into my faith journey. Before we get started, I wanna remind you guys to hit the bell right next to the subscription button so that you are notified every time there's a new episode of BAM! All Things Adrian. So, a lot of you may wonder like, what is my religion? I would consider myself a Christian, a follower of Christ. And um, a lot of you also may be wondering what role did religion play in my life growing up? I would say it played a huge role. Um, I was raised in not just a Christian household, but a Pentecostal household. The main focus of our religion was based on the day of Pentecost, which was when the Holy Spirit came down, there was little fireballs on top of people's heads, people were speaking in tongues, Holy Spirit, fuego. Why are you laughing? Is that not a good description? It was perfect. Okay, great, awesome. He said it, he was gonna say it's fantastic. I felt that coming out of his mouth. The Holy Spirit and being very charismatic was a big part of my childhood. Also, there were some, I think it's called legalistic rules, which means we follow very strict rules in our Pentecostal religion, which was uh, the women in my family did not wear pants. My mom didn't wear pants until she was in her 20s and out of my grandmother's house. My grandmother, my tita Carmen Maria Zayas, uh, was an incredible prayer warrior and she did not wear pants. She did not wear makeup. She didn't really do anything that felt vain. We attended a church in the Lower East Side, which is the church I grew up in called Primitive Christian Church. We were a part of the Assemblies of God, uh, the Latino sector of the Assemblies of God. My mother, when she became pregnant with my sister, she had my father convert. He was originally raised Catholic. He did his first communion, all of that good stuff, was baptized, all of that Catholic. And then he became Pentecostal when he married my mom and when they were getting ready to start a family. It was really important to my mother that our faith play a huge role in our upbringing. So it was important to her that her and my father be evenly yoked. Once upon a time, people, I thought that this had something to do with eggs. That is not what evenly yoked means. It actually has to do with like a horse and you know how the yoke is on their thing and if it's uneven, it throws off the balance of everything. An oh, an ox. Again, this is why I have Israel here. Okay, it was an ox. It was important that my dad also be Pentecostal, so he converted. Now, because I had a mom that was English speaking, she's New Yorican, and my dad was Ecuadorian, he attended Spanish service, and my mom attended English service. Guess what I attended? Both. My mom ran an after school program out of the basement of our church, so we literally did everything in church. Did I also mention I lived directly across the street? So if they were preparing for the Easter play and they were like, we don't have the props that we need. We'd hear our buzzer and you'd be like, what the heck? And they're like, Nilda, the ladies from church, Nilda, we're needing um, some pots and pans for this one section that the kids are doing. We would be a part of everything in church. Like church was a main fundamental part of my life. So there are things that I didn't do, couldn't do, wouldn't do. Growing up in my home, we really only listened to gospel worship music, uh, Hosanna cassette tapes that you would get from Integrity Music that got delivered to our house, and that was like a huge excitement for us. Like, yes, we got the new worship songs. Some of the other things I couldn't do, um, again, the worldly music. There were programs on television that I was not allowed to watch. Married with Children, The Simpsons was totally forbidden in my home because I think Bart called his teacher the B word one time and my mom caught that and she was like, yeah, never again. Another show that I wasn't allowed to watch was Roseanne. And the reason why my mom didn't allow that was, same thing with Married with Children, she thought it depicted a not so wholesome, great view of a family. Two things that my mom did growing up that I'm sure some of you may think is weird if you weren't raised this way, but for us this was normal. Uh, my mom would have us put on our armor, the full armor of God. So before I would go to school, my mom would pray with both me and my sister at our doorway when she would send us out of the house. 
and she would pray over us that God protect us and that we remember who we are, that we be a light in a dark world. I found it kind of like, uh, when you're younger. And then when you get older, I just cherish those moments so much. Like we had a whole thing, we'd be like, I put on the bless, the breastplate, wow. I put on the breastplate of righteousness, the sandals of the gospel of truth, the something of righteous, right? My helmet of salvation. I have my Bible, which is my sword, right? Oh, boom, and there yes. you are. Hi, mommy. Okay, so we are discussing on all things Adrian. Are you at the train station? Where are you? Costco? Oh, Walmart, okay. Walmart, I thought it was Costco. Hi, Papa. This is not sponsored by you guys, but clearly we are fans. Walmart, Costco, all that big bulk. So, Mommy, I'm talking about the fact that you raised me walking out the house every day before we'd leave. You would pray over Claudette and I, and you would have us put on the whole armor. Yes. Your service is really on struggle right now. You need to pray that the Holy Spirit helped the service out. Mommy, Israel's saying that your service needs the whole armor of God because it says poor connection. Mom, well, how does it go? We put on the helmet of salvation. Uh huh. My breastplate of righteousness. Oh my God. I had a breastplate of righteousness. Okay. Listen, Deanna knew it better. I'll call you back. I love you. I love you. All you got to do is go into the Bible and look it up, girl. She said, all you got to do is go into the Bible and look it up. Okay, I love you. I'll call you back. Mwah. Bendicion. Okay, so these are my little cousins that I absolutely adore. Fun fact, I'm actually Deanna's godmother. Hi. Oh, your service wants to be janky too? I need, can you guys put the, can we get our armor together, please? Yes. Okay, I'm ready. Go. Ready? Yeah. Okay, everybody. I had that one, I already knew that. Boom, there's my sandals. The shield, of faith. shield of faith. And the sword, which is your word. And the sword, and which is your word. In the name of Jesus. And we go forth in the name of Jesus. I was out here straight up Xena Warrior Princess. My faith has absolutely helped guide me in my life. And I think ultimately that's what it comes down to. My faith and my religion and my relationship with Christ comes down to his ultimate love for us, which was dying on the cross. And I want to be a reflection of that kind of love every single day in my life. I think it makes my life better. It makes me be a better person when I wake up in the morning. It makes me be a better wife. The fact that I don't just answer to my husband, but I answer to God in everything that I do. It makes me be conscious of the decisions I make. Am I being good to people? Am I being kind to people? Am I uh, serving my community? Also give glory to God in everything that I do. That's extremely important, recognizing that every blessing and every gift that I've been given in this life is directly comes from God. It's not all about me, but it's about Him and like, I don't get blessed, oh, because I'm just so amazing. No, I truly believe that my grandmother's prayers, my mother's prayers, there's been generations of blessing, and that the good that I do in this lifetime, my children will receive those blessings for that. Prayer gets me through every single day. I believe in the power of prayer. Ultimately, God is good. God is good, God is real. Uh, pick up a Bible, read about how good he is. Um, the way I, I love music, so obviously I was drawn to worship music. That's what my husband does. There's nothing better than coming down the steps and like hearing amazing music and hearing my husband just be on the piano and worshiping God. It was really important to me to marry somebody with the same faith as me, but I didn't realize that and I wasn't conscious about that because I had dated people before that didn't attend church and then later on in the relationship, it kind of became a weird spot for us because I'd be like, hey, I really want to go to church or I'd want to listen to worship music and they'd be like, ugh, not so into that. So yes, that was extremely important for me. I think it's beautiful to be able to bond over something like that. One of the first things that Israel and I connected on when we were friends was the fact that we both grew up in churches that sang coritos. Coritos are Spanish hymns. And one day I was like singing something and he knew the rest of it. And I was like, wait, what? I'm like, wait, wait, hold on. How do you know these songs? Una mirada de fe, una mirada. Like there's so many of those songs that are so nostalgic for me and that blessed my life as a child. And I think us having a very similar upbringing gives us something really awesome to connect about, to laugh about, to be nostalgic about, 
to discuss like, oh my gosh, did you do this growing up? Oh my gosh, me too. We did this or we did it this way. There were some differences, but that was really, really important to me. And I just feel blessed to have someone in my life that I can pray with, someone that prays over me, someone that covers me, that I can worship with, that I just think that's so special and that means so much to me. Israel and I always talk about this and that's um, a big thing is, you know, how do we want to raise our children? What's important to us? What are the things that we completely agreed with our upbringing and what are the things that we don't agree with? I would say the main thing is similar to my mom, not focusing so much on religion, but really focusing on a relationship and that I would want my children to be aware of their spiritual side and feel connected to something. I think there's nothing greater than having Jesus in my life because it brings me so much hope. It is literally the opposite of fear. When I think of God, I think of my faith and that I would want to raise my children, not fear-based, but faith-based. Sometimes Iz and I laugh about the fact, you know, we were raised more like with so much condemnation and like, if you do this, you're going to hell. If you don't do this, you're going to hell. I'd like to believe that Jesus is a really good, good father. We sing that song in church, but I think a lot of us have a hard time recognizing how good he is and that what he really wants for our lives is good things. He doesn't want to come and scorn us and like be this evil tyrant to us. That's not the God I serve. I really want to raise my kids to believe that they can do anything, don't need to live their lives in fear because they have Jesus. Instead of focusing on all the things that they can't do because they're a Christian, I want them to focus on all the things that they can do. My answer to people that want to be controversial or that think I'm controversial or that think that um, I don't represent a perfect Christian, my answer to that is please pray for me. We're all a work in progress. We're all under construction. But more than that, I don't think that that is the best reflection of Jesus. And I think that while you're attacking someone else and their walk of life or what they do or what they don't do, think about what would Jesus do? And I think that the most important thing to remember is that Jesus is love. And even if you are gonna reprimand somebody or correct somebody, that you do it with love. Doing it in a comment on Instagram, probably not the most loving way to do it. Maybe a DM, maybe in private, maybe in your private time with God, bring me up in your prayers. Lord, Adrian's out there. I don't agree with what she wore today. You know, maybe convict her, maybe put that in her heart that she may want to do, whatever it is. That to me seems like a better route than bashing someone. I don't believe that that's Christ-like. So many different questions of, you know, drinking wine or listening to worldly music. Some people, it doesn't affect their walk with Christ, other people it does. At the end of the day, it's about your heart and your relationship with Christ. That's between you and Jesus. That don't have nothing to do with me. I'm on my path, you're on yours. I felt like if we all did that a bit more and joined Mind Your Business Ministries, I think that's where the love of Christ really is. But again, if you ever feel that you need to correct someone or give them a word, just do it with love. Don't forget to subscribe and remember to hit the bell next to the subscription box so that you can get notified of all my new episodes. Let me know in the comments what you think. What has been your faith journey? Share it with me. I love you guys.